It is an honor for me to be here with these incredible women who served, who served in World War II. Now, some served on the home front, some served in uniform. All of these ladies were very young when they took that first risk, when they stepped out of line and stepped forward to make a difference in supporting the war effort. Now, I've been told I'm going to lose control of all of you in about two minutes. So very quickly, let me just introduce you all. Eleanor, I know that you built planes in World War II and then B-17s thereafter. So we can talk about everything you did in Long Beach because there were factories all over this country. Now, Erlene, you built Liberators, B-17s. Am I right? B-24s. B-24s. <laughs> B-17s, B-29s in Seattle and in Michigan. Right. Which is now a... a Not Michigan, just Seattle. Just Seattle, okay. Well, then everything I've read is incorrect, so you're just going to have to <laughs> fix me up here and get me right. But I want to ask each of you, tell me about what made you take that risk and how old were you when you started? Very good. I can talk a little bit louder. Sure, I can always talk louder. <laughs> Thank you. Tell me about when you first started. What made you take that first risk to leave home, to take a job that was not expected of you? It was a great challenge for us women. And when they started advertising for women as the men were leaving for war, I was right there. And, uh, you know, with my great challenge and, and was hearing about they didn't want us, they didn't want us in the plant right away, the men didn't, but when they found out that we cooperated and, and did the work real good, they started cooperating with us and helping us, and it was good to use the tools that men were using that they didn't think we ever could do, but we did a great job, and they finally admitted it, you know, and... What was the best part of that job? Just being around people and knowing what we were fighting for, why we were building airplanes for, you know, and they were going out there and helping get the war won. And so it's the lessons of teamwork, of having colleagues, of having people you work with who were there doing the same thing, because there were thousands who did the same work that you did. Tell me a little bit about what got you started and your friends. Well, when the war started, all of our young men left. So what do us girls want to hang around for? So we decided to go to Seattle for the summer, my sister and I and my girlfriend. And we thought it'd be a lark. We thought that'd be great. But we all signed in as Rosie's at Boeing Aircraft in Seattle, Washington. And we thought it just t turned amazing how, how proud we were of what we were doing. We didn't realize when we signed in what that meant to us and to our country. And we just loved it. And we worked all through the war. I'm very proud of what we did. We were young, very young, very naive. How old were you we, when you started? I was 17 when 17. I went to Seattle. Yes. And we'd work all day and dance half the night. And so, you know, we, we could do that then. Of course, we'd sleep all day Sunday. <laughs> but it, it was so rewarding, very rewarding. Tell me a little bit about what got you started. Oh, I got married and followed a husband. <laughs> That's right. You got married very young, didn't you? I did. Well, tell. Tell? <laughs> Barely 18. <laughs> ah. And this, you and your husband have been a team in everything you've done. Everything, and we followed the aircraft all these years. Fo so, I don't know what you mean, followed the aircraft. He worked in aircraft. Ah, oh, okay. I lost him a year ago at 100. <laughs> well, God bless you and everything you've done because I believe your service, your sacrifice, even if you did dance all night, has made <laughs> great inroads and a great example for all of us today. Because so many people think World War II is back there with the pyramids and it's yesterday. This is just yesterday in our history. And for many, many of us, and for you too, I assume, some days it feels like yesterday. Me. <laughs> I said, we're right now, we're walking history. <laughs> Soon we'll just be a page in the history book. So if you have parents and grandparents, listen to them, because this is history. I wish I'd have listened more to my parents and grandparents. 
it's important. It's good to see so many young people yes, it interested is. in. Yeah, really. <laughs> I love our military. I do a lot with the Air Force. Every time I go home, I'm just so proud of what all your young people are doing. You're just amazing. It is. We love you. I'll tell you, we love you, what you're doing for us and our country. <laughs> told me you're the big pistol of the group, so let's see what you got. What? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me your best story. My best story? Yeah. I was working until I was 95. That's it. And uh, building the C-17. The how, many, how many of you have been on a C-17? Wonder where that came from. <laughs> My favorite plane. And the, the Air Force gave me a Lifetime Achievement Award for building every one of them, 279. You built 279. <laughs> so that was your favorite plane. Why did you like it the most? Well, I liked the, the one before that, uh, the KC-135. Mm. And so the Air Force let me fly in the C-17 finally. And so they showed us uh, how they put the gas in, you know, um, refueling over the ocean or whatever. And here comes this little plane doing the refueling on us. And it was the 135. And so I had my two planes together. I was in one and the other was refueling. I was so excited. Because <laughs> I had built that, worked on that one in the 50s when I worked at Ryan. I worked at Ryan 14 years, and then during the war at Roar in Chula Vista, mm -hmm. and then the rest of the time, almost 50 years, at Boeing, McDonnell, Douglas, Douglas, you know. So this is the entire aviation history of this country for military aircraft. Bill 60. About 64 years of building airplanes. That's incredible. And they keep taking me to places to see airplanes, keep <laughs> taking pictures with them. But I mean, you know, I've always liked airplanes. I, I, I wanted to be a pilot when I was young, when I was a kid, but I, I, building them was fine too. Because every time we see a C 17 going on the air, our crew, all the ones that build it, we, th we think it's ours. We say, oh, there goes my plane. There goes my plane, because we mm -hmm. feel so close to it, because we all worked on it for so long together. It, it, it's just amazing. I, I miss it. I miss all those people and working on that plane, you know. Well, it's good to, for, good to be here today and get to see the next generation who's going to know what you did. Yes. <laughs> so what is your favorite plane? B-24. The B-24. <laughs> now, I've heard it's pretty hard to steer others. compared to the B-17. Do you think that's true? Do I think more? It's true that it's hard to steer? Oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't do that. Never tried it, right? <laughs> I oiled the guns for them. You oiled the guns. I did. Okay. <laughs> and what is your favorite? Oh, the B-17. The B-17. I love the B-17. <laughs> when uh, the papers did my story, they said, May's in love with her B-17. I had to laugh. I, there's something special about it. I guess maybe for the first one that I wrote down. I didn't like that as well as the B-29. Not particularly why, but when we went to work at Boeing, they liked us young, naive children, kids, because you know we would climb inside that wing to do the bucking of these rivets. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if you couldn't be claustrophobic or you couldn't, uh, you had to be pretty small to get between those ribs. So they liked us young ones, and like I said, we were naive. We didn't know that the, this was <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> but you know, it's so rewarding. One day, uh, Hap Arnold, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Hap Arnold. He was the general of the Air Force at the time, because we didn't have an Air Force. It was Army Air at that time. He came in, and he'd stand, he'd talk to us. And he just stood there and talked so nice to us and shook our hands. And you know, we didn't realize how important he was at the time. When he'd leave, we were just so proud of what we were doing. And I'd been invited to the Pentagon so many times, and, and they just marveled at the fact that I shook hands with Hap Arnold. <laughs> and I said, it's a nice, rewarding thing to come out of all of this. <clears throat> it's nice things to remember. It's a, nice, it's a nice thing to remember, but it's also a leadership lesson. For those of you who are studying to become our next generation of leaders, 
It is the leader who pays attention to what people are doing that is so important to the ultimate mission. Right. So you've never forgotten meeting him. No, never. And see, if that were today, we'd all take selfies, right? Uh -huh. And it's funny because when I, I've seen his pictures on Time Magazine, I've been to Arlington Cemetery where he's buried, mm -hmm. and it just, it never leaves you when you, something like that, just stays with you forever. It's important, it was very important. Don't forget, we came up out of the, such hard times, we came up out of the Great Depression, the Dust Bowl, the, a market crash, so when World War II broke out, we were ready to, to, we would defend our country over anything. Every man, woman, and child dropped everything to defend our country. And we all pulled together, we all worked together. And I think that's so great, the way we worked together. And I'm so proud of the way we did it. It just seemed like it wasn't my job or your job, it was our job. And I think we did a good job. I think you did an amazing job because we are all here today and it took every person. How, do you know how many planes were built overall that were used in World uh, War II? Well, I think there's 12,000 B-17s. We built 5,000 Boeing in Seattle, mm -hmm. but we didn't dare build near as many B-29s because they were having a little problem with that when it was, a, I think, fire mm -hmm. in the engine or something, so that was slower. We and built 7,000. 7,000. More than an hour. <laughs> how many planes did you build, or how many did you think were built overall of yours? Thousands. <laughs> <laughs> count them, down, Eleanor, count them. <laughs> I even oh. dream about them. I, I dream now. Oh. I, I never retired. They closed the plant down for everybody. Boeing didn't want to be there. Because people say you retired. I did not. I was laid off because of the plant shut down. <laughs> I, I, I want people to know I did not retire. <laughs> Even though I was 95, still working. There you go. So in the mighty 8th Air Force, there were 350,000 men who were in England at different bases flying those bombers over, over Europe. And you were responsible for a large number yeah. of those planes. Responsible. The only thing I don't like about SEAL. You like SEAL? No. Yeah. We have the SEAL thing. <laughs> You get all your clothes, you could never ever get rid of that seal if you got it on yeah. you. <laughs> I, I uh, remember it during the Korean War too, but at that time, now the World War II was over and we were raising our families and after well, World War II, it was very difficult. Yeah. Times were really great because every uh, company like Boeing or uh, all of the, like General Electric and <clears> Westinghouse, <throat> they were all retooling now. They're going from military equipment back to radios and what have you. So there's so many strikes. And so it was very difficult after World War II and we were all raising our young families. And uh, that was a difficult time. So when I went to work for the, for the Korean War, it was mostly for a need to survive rather than a loyalty like we went mm -hmm. during World War II, you know? Yeah. And like I said, we all dropped everything during World War II, did, but everything that was necessary, even young children did things, which was important. I think the truth is that nobody who lived through those times was unaffected by this war. Everyone in this country had a role to play right. and, a, and a way to support mm -hmm. and did. They did. And for every woman who has served, whether on the home front or in uniform, throughout the history of this country, every one of them is a volunteer. 